we're going to begin our physical assessment of our client. The first thing you're going to do is come out into the waiting room and call your client by name. Is there a Kathy Donovan here? Hi, that's me. Hi. Hi. My name is Becky. Hi, I'm going to be your nurse today doing Great. your assessment. Great. Could I get you to come on back to the sure. office? Mm -hmm. You can go ahead and have a seat. Can you tell me why you're here today? Yes, I'm starting a new job next week over at the hospital, and they told me I needed to come and have a physical done. Great. Uh, what time was your appointment? My appointment today was for 2.15. Okay, well, we're running a little bit behind. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. My patient explained to me the reason why she's here, and I noticed when she walked in, her gait was steady. She wasn't limping or leaning to one side, and her posture was erect as she walked in and as she's sitting here. I see that she's making good eye contact with me when I'm talking to her. That's important because certain cultures will not address you and look you in the eye, but also it can be a sign of depression or illness. I notice that my patient's not demonstrating any signs of distress. She's not moving around in her seat, and she's not wringing her hands or tapping her toes or looking away. She appears well-groomed and dressed appropriately for the weather. Her hair is clean. I notice her nails and her hands are clean. So are her clothes. Sometimes you could have a patient who perhaps was homeless or was suffering with a condition and they were no longer taking good care of themselves. I also noticed that her speech is clear when she talks to me. She's not slurring her words and her words are appropriate. She's not at all confused. Can you tell me if you follow any special type of diet? I don't follow a special diet. Mm -hmm. I do try to eat healthy. I eat lots of fruit and vegetables, okay. uh, lots of chicken and ground turkey, mm -hmm. and I do drink lots of water every day. My patient follows a healthy diet. This is a great time if your patient is a diabetic or following a cardiac diet that you can investigate a little bit further and perhaps educate them on appropriate foods to eat. I also noticed that her weight is appropriate for her height. Her skin when I shook her hand was warm and dry and the skin that I can see looks intact, and I don't notice any moles or scars, bruising, anything that would be of concern to me. As I move through my different systems during my physical assessment, I'll evaluate that area of skin as I go through. When we do our physical assessment, we do it by systems. It's a head-to-toe assessment. I'm going to begin with the neurologic system. When I went into the waiting room, my patient responded to her name. She also knew to come to the doctor's office today, and she knew the time of her appointment. So I've established that my patient is alert and oriented to person, place, time, and she told me why she's here. She's got a new job and she needs a physical. That's the event or situation. So she's alert and oriented times four. Now I'm going to assess her pupils. I would dim the lights for this and I would explain to my patient, okay, when I'm doing this, I'm going to have my light on and if you can just keep looking right at my nose, sure. I'm going to bring the pen light in from the side and shine it on her left pupil. I noticed that it constricted when the light was there and when I moved the light away, it dilated. Now I'm gonna do it in the same eye and I'm looking at her right eye and it also constricts and dilates. I'll do the other eye and now I'm watching her left eye. Excellent. So far I know that her pupils are equal they're round, they're reactive to light, and now I need to see if they're reactive to accommodation. What I need you to do is just follow the tip of this pen. Okay. The light is off, okay? Okay. I've brought the lights back up in the room. I just need you to follow this. I'm gonna bring it close to your face, and you're gonna feel your eyes come together, all right? When I brought the item close to her, her pupils constricted, and when I brought it back, to a distance, her pupils dilated. That's accommodation. Now I'm going to check your extraocular movements. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. Again, if you can focus just on this and move your eyes only. Hold your head still. Sure. Okay. I'm going to make an X and pause and down. The other side of the X. And now I'm going to make a cross all the way up center, all the way down, all the way left, and all the way right. Notice I made my motions go to the far distance. If I only stayed right here, 
I'm not actually checking her extraocular movements to their full range of motion. Her extraocular movements are intact. Stick your tongue straight out for me. And can you move it side to side? Excellent. I noticed that her tongue is midline. It doesn't droop to one side when I asked her to stick it straight out. And she has excellent tongue mobility moving it side to side. I also noticed that her mucous membranes are pink and moist. Staying in the neurologic system, I'm going to go ahead and assess her range of motion, first in her upper extremities, then her lower extremities. Before I begin, could you tell me, are you having any pain in any of your joints? No. Excellent. If at any time you experience pain, let me know and we'll stop, okay? Sure will. All right. If you can just do as I do, okay. I'm going to check your range of motion. Rotate your wrists for me, and bend your elbow, and then raise your arms to the side, all the way up down. Excellent. So she's got good range of motion in each of these joints. That's what we tested. So she has full range of motion in her upper extremities. No pain with that, correct? No. Excellent. Let's go ahead and check your lower extremities. Sure. If I could get you to just raise your thigh and the other one. Can you kick your right leg out and your left? And then can you rotate your right ankle and rotate your left ankle? Excellent. No pain? No pain. Good. She has full range of motion in her bilateral lower extremities. Now that I know she's got good range of motion, I can go ahead and check her strength in her upper extremities. I need you to go ahead and grab my fingers and squeeze as hard as you can. Excellent. Now, go ahead and put your arms straight out for me. And I'm going to push up. I want you to resist, okay? Now let's go this direction. I'm going to push down and I want you to resist. Strength in her upper extremities is strong and it's equal bilaterally. It could be a problem if one side was weaker than the other. Now I'm going to check the strength of her lower extremities. I'm only going to check one leg at a time because it's difficult to lift both legs against pressure. Could I get you to raise your leg for me please? Excellent. And the other one? Notice that I'm checking her thigh strength on both legs before I move down to check the lower part of her legs. If you could kick out for me, and then pull back. Again, kick out, pull back. And if I could get you to pick your leg up and push down like you're pushing on a gas pedal. And now pull your toes up towards your head. Thank you. And pull up. Her lower extremities are strong and equal bilaterally. For the final portion of our neuro assessment, we're going to assess our patient's spine. We're checking for spinal alignment and to make sure that there are no curvatures of the spine. Those would include scoliosis, kyphosis, and lordosis. Ask your patient to bend forward as though they're touching their toes. They only have to bend as far as is comfortable for them. Could you bend over as though you're touching your toes for me, please? Sure. You would palpate the spinal column under clothing. You want to move your hand up the spinal column, feeling for masses or misalignment, any curvatures. I'm going to take my palms and put them on her scapula, and I'm assessing for any elevation of one scapula. That could indicate a problem. I'll do the same thing here at the hips, and those are also level. You can go ahead and stand up.